one of the biggest questions that programmers are facing today is are we out of a job soon? Some parts of this video were written slash inspired by my interaction with ChatGPT. Try and find out which are the parts. I'll share the interaction with ChatGPT at the end of the video. Everyone is talking about GPT-3, especially ChatGPT, and I'm going to go direct into answering the question, no, it is not going to replace you anytime soon, but you may want to start leveraging it unless you kind of want to fall in behind. I'll defend my argument with a similar business case that has been actually developing for years, and this is the translation business. It's been speculated for many years now that translators are going to be fully replaced by machine translation. However, that is very unlikely, at least in the foreseeable future, because even though AI has made amazing progress in the recent years, there are still many challenges that need to be overcome before it fully replaces translators. One of them, it is its inability to understand meaning and context. Humans are able to use their knowledge and experience to interpret the meaning of the text and choose the most appropriate translation, while AI models are very limited by the data they are trained on. This means that sometimes they can produce translations that are not very natural sounding or they're just plain weird, and especially when the text contains idioms or slang or very technical terms that are difficult to translate, such as what people would call in the industry the main terms, such as you can think about as financial terms, scientific terms, technology terms. So translating paper about pharmacology is very different from translating a paper about finance, where maybe some words are the same, but they have completely different meaning within the context. Translators are able to take into account cultural and specific domain contexts of the text they are translated, and they can choose the most appropriate translation based on that also based on their audience and, of course, the domain. In contrast, machine translated algorithms are not yet able to account for these cultural domain differences, which can result in translations sounding very weird, natural or inappropriate. From my experience, these models are not truly intelligent. I've had the opportunity of training dozens, if not possibly hundreds of these models, with, which can arguably be one of the cleanest, best data sets for translation. Such a nice curated data set. Yet these models never truly fail to impress me with how brittle and how unreliable they could be. And that even under the perfect circumstances, they were never perfect. The philosophical conclusion that I ended up was after training a lot of models, different data, experimenting, tweaking with them, parameters and everything, I just realized that these models are just spitting out stuff. They're just spitting out what they see in the training data. And that's fundamentally different from an actual intelligence. It is not thinking, it is more akin to guessing. Another thing that I found out is that even if you start giving it more and more data, that doesn't necessarily make it a better model. In order for us to truly achieve these next level Terminator, Skynet type of AI, we would need a different architecture than the Transformer. What does this mean to programmers? The way I see is that ChatGPT is going to be an assistant that helps you query certain information, for example, documentation. Let's play with this example. If you are developing a software and you are unsure about how to use a certain library, you can just ask ChatGPT to give you a description of what the library does, to install it, a couple of examples. This basically just makes you save a lot of time that you would otherwise be spending looking through pages of documentation, poorly written article. Stack Overflow also did not end programming. It just made it easier. WordPress you know, also and web development is just evolved it and this is what GPT is going to be all about. Evolution, optimization. It will give you the opportunity to deliver more value, faster and better. But ultimately, I don't think it will replace you or me anytime soon. But I think that will make our jobs evolve.
Also, this is a far away future because if it can solve a simple problem, which has a lot of investing on, by the way, such as translating like domain specific documents, such as a pharmaceutical document with perfect accuracy, how can you expect it to design and create a large complex system perfectly? Because the problem is, and this is also what software engineering and translation is about, the devil is in the details. And those little details is what makes a big impact in providing value. And that's why I think humans will still play a major role in the upcoming years in programming as well as in translation. We're not gonna lose our jobs anytime soon, but like translators, we need to start evolving and adapting. We need to start incorporating these tools into our workflow, like how translators incorporated machine translation into their workflow. And this means leveraging tools like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot, Tab9, and all these autocomplete tools. It's the same as using a nice IDE. You can still use them and have all your macros and maybe you can create a super nice custom setting. You can also use IntelliJ or VS Code and it will also be amazing that you have so much functionality. And I kind of sucker for this because for a long time I didn't use a lot of the extensions, especially for Docker. And I honestly don't know how I could live without the Docker extension on VS Code or the remote uh, extension on VS Code because they're just amazing. Just to wrap this up, sometimes you can see me looking a little bit to the right and this is because I was trying to actually follow the script this time, which is very, very difficult to do because I really like rambling because part of this script was actually written by ChatGPT. I'll share the, the screenshots. If you notice, the ideas are there, fundamentally the script ended up being different. Even when I speak, it just ends up different. That's because I don't follow the script. In any ways, ChatGPT did not replace all my creative process. It just enhanced it to make it go faster, easier, and to actually focus on the things that I want to focus on. I also use another AI tool called Descript that basically removes all the mm and ah uh from, from all my videos which would take up to maybe two, three hours to remove everything to be perfect. Now it's so much easier, 10 to 15 minutes and it's done. Don't see these tools as your enemy, but see these tools as an opportunity to focus on what really matters, which is creating the application or creating the workflow that you want. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you sometime again sooner than last time. And have a great day.